68, that's what I was looking for. I'm on the battlefield. 268. That's what I was hunting for right there. Good one, man. I can't remember the number. 268. All right. I was alone and I don't. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. Thank <laughs> you. 
thank Him for, and I have so much to thank Him for. I thank Him every day for everything, no matter if I'm in a valley or if I'm on the mountaintop. I just want to thank Him for everything. Now that means a lot to me, you know, that the Lord is so good to us, and I just want Him to know how thankful I am. When I look around Open me up 
lot of bond men at the same time, but we just push on and try to sing. Yeah. Okay. Well, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it sing. This little light of mine. Worship him in the spirit 
and in the truth. But if you don't get in the spirit, amen, then you ain't in the truth. Amen. And if you don't get in the truth, then you ain't in the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. You must be in the spirit, amen, to worship the Lord. Amen. And that's why I'm in the spirit right now. I feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost all over this house. Amen. Because he's in this house. Amen. Because you know what? We're in one mind and one accord. Amen. You know what? You can't have a whole house full sometimes. Uh, amen. And you ain't, you ain't got nothing but a bunch of confusion. Amen. In a lot of cases. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to worship him in the spirit. Amen. And if you're not with me, then you're against me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're not with me, then you're against him. Amen. But you must worship him in the spirit, Brother J.C. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You must worship Him in the Spirit. Amen. You know why? That's why you don't see uh, uh, people coming in, the lost people coming in, because there's so much confusion in the house of the Lord anymore. Amen. But I don't know about you, but I don't want no confusion in God's house. Uh, amen. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Uh, amen. And I'm here to tell you, I'm going to preach the Word, uh, whether it comes or whatever it does. Amen. All I can tell you is just to move up to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know what? I had to move up to it, Sister Pat. Amen. you got to live it, Sister Pat. Amen. You can't play church. You can try to come in and try to play church. But I'm here to tell you, God's people knows the difference. Amen. Come on. You can't fool God's people. Amen. And I'm not talking about anyone in here particular right now. Amen. I'm out right here to tell you, the devil had to flee. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. The devil had to flee. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to sing a song here. And I'm singing a song without going to that land. Amen. You know what? I'm working out my salvation, J.C. Come on. Amen. I'm here to work out my salvation. The Bible said to work it out with fear and trembling. Amen. And if you don't fear the Lord, amen, all I can tell you, you better get the fear in Because you're going to see him here before too long. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're going to get your chance to see him. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he's going to put his uh, uh, sheep on the... <laughs> Woo! Come on. Oh. Amen. amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. But I'm here to tell you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want to go to that land. Amen. Come on. Amen. Well, give me a key code. Let me see if I can get in it here. If I can't get in it, then I'll get in something else. Amen. Right. Oh, yeah. Is that a key code? All right. Uh, <laughs> help me sing this, Kurt. Amen. Well, don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land?
He knows. Amen. Amen. He knows all about it, Amen. JC. Amen. Amen. You know what? We've got to pray for these kind of people. Yeah. Amen. We've got to pray that they'll make that transition. Amen. That one final transition, amen, that they need to make. Amen. To make a decision. Either live for God or live for you know what you're going to do. You must live for the Lord. Amen. There ain't no other way. Amen. He said there is no other way. You're worse than a thief and a robber. We can try it any other way. Come on. Come on. Wake up, Kurt. Amen. Worse than a thief and a robber. If you try it any other way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God wants us to worship Him. Amen. Amen. In the spirit and the truth. Amen. And that's why I'm here tonight to worship Him in the spirit and the truth. You know what? I can tell who's worshiping and who's not. Amen. Amen. You know what? I couldn't lead the sheep. Amen. To the fold, Jason. Amen. If I didn't know the difference. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Praise the Lord. you got to know the difference. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have to know the difference, Sister Clay. Yeah. Amen. Because if you don't, amen, God's house will be turned into a den of thieves. Right. Come on. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. And he won't have it. Amen. Come on. Amen. amen. They find selling in the church. Right. The on. Lord got angry. He went in and he turned the tables over to J.C. Amen. Amen. The money changers turned them right over. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. He got angry. Let me tell you something. He done every bit of this without sin. Amen. Come on. Amen. And uh, he turned them over. Amen. He turned the seats over with some of them that were sitting in the seats. Amen. You know what? I can imagine seeing them in the seat. Amen. Amen. And the Lord went in and he just went and got the seat and flipped them over right, right in the people right in them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. People might say, well, that sounds a little cruel, but I'm here to tell you. The Bible tells me to be bold, J.C. Huh? Come on. That's right. Amen. You have to. Right. Amen. You can't let this anything go. That's right. Come on. Amen. You can't let this anything go. Amen. Because I'm only here to tell you. There's some people that will take advantage of letting anything go. That's right. Come on. Huh? Come on. Praise the Lord. And I don't believe God's... The Lord wants God's people to be took advantage of, you say. Right. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants us to be good to one another. Amen. To treat each other with respect. That's right. Come on. That's you know right. what? To be good to one another. That's right. In the house of the Lord. Right. To show ourselves friendly to our brothers and sisters. Amen. But he also wants us to stand up to the devil. Right. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 To put the devil in its place, you yeah. say. You want to give room to the devil? I tell you what, you give him any room, amen, and he'll take you out. Come on, you can't give place to the devil. My word yeah. tells me not to give place to the enemy. Right. Amen, praise the Lord. Praise right. the Lord. Pray for them. Right. Amen, we've got to pray for them. Right. Amen. Right. That they'll come to know the Lord. Right. Before it's everlasting too late. Come on. Amen. I'm going to tell you this. We're at the midnight hour, J.C. Amen. Amen. We're at the midnight hour right now. The Lord's going to step out and he's going to call his church home. Amen. We ain't got time to come into the house of the Lord and play church. Amen. We ain't got time for it, J.C. Amen. This is real, brother. Amen. I'm not just filming it in my hands and my feet for nothing. Amen. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. I'm not just feeling this for nothing. Brother. Amen. Amen. My Lord and Savior, he went and died a horrible death. But you know what? He's, he, he died a horrible death. <laughs> but he's very much alive. Amen. Let me tell you. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's very much alive, J.C. You know how I know he's alive? <laughs> Because he's a living in me. Amen. Just like the old song. Jesus is living in me. Amen. He's in my feet. When I'm walking. <laughs> he's in my tongue when I'm talking. <laughs> he's in my eyes and now I can see. Amen. He's in the songs, they see, that I'm singing. <laughs> Come on. He's in my heart and his joy is ringing. 
Huh? Come on. Because why? Because he's living in me. That's good. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Amen. Now, I know we got more singers in the house. We're going to give each one of you a chance to sing. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know who's going to be uh, bringing the word. I don't know if, uh, if you got anything to share for you. Uh, if you got something. Well, yeah, you're right. Come on. I won't Woo. say I don't. Huh? I won't say I don't. Okay, she don't say she don't. What did you say you do? Well, <laughs> I'll, quite a lot? Of reading, I don't quite know. a lot? Okay, well. I don't know if we got time for it either or not. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I'm willing. All right, willing. All right. Uh, who's got a song out here? Anyone? Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's good to us, church. He's given us another opportunity to be here, brother. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. You just thing about wanting to go to that city. Well, this is the first one I'll see. It. <laughs> it's been a beautiful city. Just over the
think it that right now. <laughs> Oh, 
Alright, has anyone else got a song? Praise the Lord. I'll say this. We've had some good singing here tonight. Amen. They got a song. I just have one song. One? Sure. Well, come on, bring that one.
the Lord.
would like to say real quick, you know, I do have a little reason to do it, but you all know I'm a fast reader. God's word don't go void, and I, and I you don't you know I don't have to stand up here today. You don't have to call me a preacher or a teacher. But one thing we all can agree on is God's word. You know, God's word is God's word. If we can't read God's word together, there's a problem. You know, we gotta we all working our way home. You know, I stand up here and I will tell you again, like I told you the Sunday before last, I stand up here as a child of God today. And everybody in here, you know, the Lord was giving me something Friday on the way home, and I wrote it down on the envelope. How many of you does God does do you like that? Just gives you parts and pieces at times. Turn your Bibles over to First Samuel, First Samuel chapter seventeen. I want to talk to you about a about a little shepherd boy, and you all heard the story a story a true story. And I want to talk to you about a giant named Goliath. Turn your Bibles over to chapter seventeen. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, I just pray that you send the Holy Ghost down, Lord. I know he's in the midst, Lord, and I just pray that the Holy Ghost, that you just send him down, Lord, that someone can hear your word, Father, in your sweet holy name, Jesus, I pray. It says, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together at Show, show, I can't pronounce that, Sister Pat, C-H-O-C-H-O-H, which belonged to Judah and pitched between the same with Show, Shoka, and Azekah, and the Ephesium, and Saul, the men of Israel. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Eli and sat at the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, who, whose height was six cubits and, and a span, six and a half foot tall. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 skills of brass. And he had graves of brass <laughs> upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver beam, and, and his spear's head weighed 600 skills of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried upon the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, and will and will we be your servants? But if I prevail against him, Terry, go sit down with your daddy, mommy, love you, and kill him, and then shall ye be our servants and serve him. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that ye may fight together. When Saul and all the Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was a son of the Ephraim of Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle in the names of the three sons, and then went to the battle where he left the firstborn and next unto him and Abinadab and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest of the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. And carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how they brethren fair and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of the lab fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went to as Jesse had commanded him and as he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle and shouted for the battle. 
For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name. And out of the armies of the Philistines and spake, spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And when all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men and stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? From who is the uncertain? circumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done that the man to the man that killeth him. And Elab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know Thy pride, thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned him from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philist Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. See, Saul didn't even want David to go. He wanted the other warriors to go. He wanted them to go fight the life. Even Saul, and they wanted David to sit still because, because he was a little old fellow. But how many of you you and you know tonight that when man tells you to be still, you must move. When God says move, you must move. It don't matter who's against you. If God be for you, who can stand against you, church? And they ain't all going to like you. They're going to persecute you for his name's sake. They ain't all going to prove of you, church. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and, and I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armored, armored, armored him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, and, and, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and he had put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had had even a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when this Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained for him. He, he, for he was but a youth and broody and fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog? 
that they all come to me with staves and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defiled. But this day will the Lord deliver thy thee into my hand and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth and that, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and all this assembly shall, shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands and it came to pass when the Philistines Sin arose and came and drew high now to meet David, and David hasted and ran toward the army and to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, and he took the of stone and slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face upon the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. See, David wasn't the choice. He wasn't the choice that the king had picked. He wasn't the choice, but he was the choice that God had picked. Yeah. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheep thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And when the men of Israel and... and Israel and the Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to the Shamron and even into Gath and into Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their tents. And David took off the head of the Philistine and brought it into Jerusalem. And he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against Philistine, he said unto Agner, the captain of the host, Agner, whose son is his youth? And Agner said as as I so liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the stripling is. And then David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine. Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said unto him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse of Bethlehem. You know, a giant, a giant church right here, he was much bigger than David. He was six and a half feet. You know, that's pretty huge. You know, a giant is something that's bigger than us. It can be something that's bigger than us. It don't have to necessarily be a person. It can be a health problem, a, si a financial situation, something that's weighing you down emotionally, church. And it seems like sometimes this giant you just keep trying to come against you, church. Sometimes giants defeat us again and again, you know, because we face them with our own strength, church. And oftentimes we lose, but we must let go and give it to God and put it in His hands and don't try to keep taking it back from God. You must trust in Him always. One of your very biggest giants that you face today, church, it's yourself. It's your flesh. Yep. It's your flesh, church. It's yourself. Right. We must deny our flesh. To deny our flesh, we, we may mean it's a may, means of willingness to respond to Christ, whatever He leads you to do. We must walk in the Spirit just like Brother Ernest said. We must always walk in the Spirit. Yeah. Turn your Bibles over to, let's see, what a question first. What are the works of the flesh? I'm going to tell you what they are. Turn your Bibles over to Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. You know, the Lord God, God, He knows. He knows what was going to be read here today. You know, you don't have to listen to me, church. You don't even have to like me. But I'm going to tell you one thing. you got to love me to get in heaven's gates. Turn your Bibles over to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emotion, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies, envious, 
murders, drunkenness, revel revelings, and such such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not. Turn your Bibles over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 26. I don't have much more reading to do. But you know I must be obedient. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? You know, it's many times, church, since it's heard the story a lot of you have about David and Goliath. But how many in here know tonight that tonight God wanted you to hear it again? You know, He, he wanted you to hear it again. And you know, I thank the Lord for being here and each and every one that's here. And you know, God's Spirit always bears witness, church. And His, His Word never goes void. But uh, I, I just love each and every one here. And God knows my heart's true. Brother. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel like I've been to church on this Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You feel like you've been to church? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you go to church and you don't feel a little bit different than you did when you went, you better find out what's wrong. Amen. Huh? Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I go to church, I want to feel different. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, I come in pretty tired and uh, tired body and this and that, aches and pains. Who ain't got aches and pains in this day that we're living in, huh? About everybody you talk to has got aches and pains, you see. Amen. They got this wrong with them, that wrong with them. Amen. <laughs> hey, ain't no wonder, you know, we're living in a corrupt world. Amen. And this old flesh, you know, it's going to, uh, it's going to have aches and pains and this and that because of the environment that we're having to live in. Amen. But you know what? There's going to come a, come a time, like I said, we're going to put on that immortality. Amen. That spiritual body. <laughs> there ain't going to be no corruption in it. Praise the Lord. And that's what I'm looking forward to, church. Amen. That's why when, you know, I come to the house of the Lord, I'm serious about it. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want everybody to, to get in and be obedient to the Lord and, and to be serious about it, Brother J.C. Amen. You have to be serious about the Lord. Right. Amen. Because uh, as I always say, you know, he, He's a good God. Amen. And He's a jealous God. Amen. 
And he's also the God of wrath. Praise the Lord. And I fear that. Amen. I fear that. I fear my Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. But anyway, we've had a good service. And I thank everyone for coming out. Amen. On this Wednesday night. And uh, you know, I've been praying uh, for quite some time about the Wednesday night service uh, that the Lord would make a way for, you know, people to come out and and let's have church, you know, on Wednesday night as well as Sunday. And uh, that's why I say, you know, God always comes through. Yeah. Amen. He always comes through. And uh, if you pray about something and believe it, without a doubt, uh, he'll answer. Amen. Amen. So he's been real good to us. And uh, tonight, you know, we've had church and uh, I feel good. And uh, the Holy Ghost been here, praise the Lord. <laughs> we just had a good time in the Lord. And uh, I always say when you come here to Christian Life Fellowship, you know, be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Uh, reference the house of God, but be obedient to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what it's all about. Uh, the more you be obedient to the Lord, the closer you'll get to it. Amen. And that's defense. Amen. The closer you get to the Lord, the more defense you have. Defend off the devil. Amen. The enemy. Praise the Lord. All right, Sister Pat, what we get in the offering tonight? Ties. Ties 200, offering 67. All right, give the Lord a good hand, clap and pray. Praise the Lord. All right, don't want anyone to forget now about the business meeting coming up in uh, November the 15th. Be on uh, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Don't forget about that. We're still taking donations on the food truck. And uh, praise the Lord. Uh, Veronica is, uh, has a youth class, uh, a children's class here on Sunday. And uh, if you feel like giving a donation for that, uh, we'll be uh, appreciative, amen, so she can, you know, use it toward the uh, uh, things that she may need for the, the class, for the little ones, amen. And, uh, you know, I love the little kids being in the house of the Lord. Uh, you know, they could be other places, but, uh, you know, I want to bring my kids up in the way of the Lord, like the Word says, amen, and my grandkids, amen. And uh, sometimes they get a little rowdy, but you know what, we'll work through that and teach them as we go, amen. It's up to the older ones to teach the younger ones, <laughs> praise the Lord. So we have to bear with a little bit until we get them lined out good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, uh, you know, I won't buy, as I, I was telling somebody this here the other day, they was talking about Halloween, and I said, well, they asked me if I believe in Halloween, and I said, huh, yeah, I sure do. I believe, <laughs> I believe uh, that they are devils. I sure do. I believe they, they use it for a devil's night. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, the devil's real too. Right. Amen. And they, they asked me if I celebrate it. I said, no, I don't celebrate it. Sure don't. And I teach my kids what evil is. And I teach them that uh, Halloween is uh, devil's night. And, uh, but I said, here's another thing too. I said, I, I, my kids knows the difference. And I said, as far as my kids, uh, dressing up in a costume and going to get candy now. I said, uh, I don't knock that. I said, if my kids want to dress up a little bit, go get candy, as long as they dress up decent. Yeah. Right. Amen, something decent. And they want to go get candy with, you know, uh, I'm not against it. I said, because I want my kids to be children. Yeah. Right. Amen, I don't want them to be soldiers. And I want them to, if they want, you know, uh, to be a soldier, they can make that decision when they grow up. If they want to be a soldier in the army or something. Right now, they're a soldier in the Lord. 
Amen. That's the only kind of soldier I want my child to be. But I want them to be little as long as they can. Amen. Because you miss them when they grow up. Amen. Amen. So, praise the Lord, I just thought I'd throw that in as a, I guess, a sideline <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I've asked Brother J.C. to pray for a message for when, next Wednesday night uh, to come and preach for us Wednesday night. Uh, I like to give everyone an opportunity when I can and feel like it, and the Lord puts it on my heart. So I ask Him, and you know, the Lord put it on my heart. So you know, and I, I have to be obedient to Him. So and uh, He said He would. So. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, put the word out. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's pray for it that uh, the Lord will send him a message. Amen. Between now and then. That's a whole week away. <laughs> Amen. Can't wait to hear it. It's probably going to be a good one. <laughs> they all good ones. Amen. If you get a message, even if it's a short one, it's a good one. Amen. God's word is good. Right. Praise the Lord. Let him be the truth and every man a what? A liar. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Has anyone got anything on their heart? Before we dismiss the service. Well, I want to praise the Lord that my legs are doing better. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's great. See, that's what I'm saying. And I want to praise the Lord for the service tonight. Amen. It's been a good one. We've had a good one. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? Uh, the enemy can't do nothing with God's people. I'm telling you, God's good, church. That's right. Amen. You put your trust in him. J.C., he'll never let you down, brother. Amen. You know what? The enemy come uh, trying to bind up the spirit. Amen. But you know what? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord come on the scene. The Holy Ghost come on the scene. Amen. And you know what? That changes things. Amen. 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 When, the, when the Lord comes on the scene. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Has anyone got anything on their heart before we dismiss it? All right. Brother Daniel, go ahead and dismiss it.